All right, in the spirit of showing off a variety of different kinds of locks, we're going to go back to lever locks. Um, it's been a few weeks, so why not? This is from Waduk 2, and trade that we had quite a while ago. I, I want to call this a Yale, but only because the key is marked Yale. This, this thing is not marked anywhere. Usually they're stamped on the front here with the model number, manufacturer, and so forth, but this one's not. But it's nice and heavy. It is a quality lock. We got a couple of anti-saw inserts into the bolt to keep you from breaking in that way. So you usually don't see that on, on junky locks. Um, it is a curtained lock, and you can see the little silver curtain there to prevent you from sticking wires. It's going to take some tools, and we'll get to that in just a minute. When I look at the key, again, you got Yale on one side. On the other side, it says five lever. When you look at that, you count seven cuts. And that's because these are typically, you don't know if you're going to be going from one side to the other. So these keys are mirrored right down the center. So this side of the uh, bidding is exactly the same as this side of the bidding. And that is a tensioner. So that means that is a tensioner. So the real bidding for levers are sandwiched in between those two tensioners. And there's all five of them. It's quite extreme, as you can see, but I wouldn't expect anything less from uh, Wattuck 2. Uh, I've already locked it, so let's talk about organization, guys. Oh, one more thing. When I lock it, you can probably see the top of the letter or just flipping up in there to prevent myself from being tempted to peek. I'm, I like to put a little piece of tape to cover that up. All right. A lot of you guys have been asking questions about the, the box. This is a Pelican R40 Ruck. It's the smallest one, and you come in a variety of colors. Um, I chose sand. I put all my curtain picks in here, and I've made a couple of other modifications you guys probably notice right away. Uh, I no longer have a pile of wires. Instead, I've got a, basically a piece of foam I cut slits in, and I sorted my wire. So we've got a, a long, medium, and short left turn we got a long medium and short right turn because you need the turned wires in other words when i say turned i mean the guys that have that little offset you need those for curtain picks so this helps me stay really organized i do have a straight one not used very often but i keep it in the bottom of here so very cool oh oh i did want to point this out normally these have a little coil of wire right here and that when you turn it i noticed i was getting Man, an awful lot of flex. I really couldn't get a good feel. So I bought a piece of one inch brass stock off of eBay and I cut it into quarter inch widths and then I just went ahead and drilled a hole and threaded it for a grub screw, drilled a hole for the wire, stick, you know, hammer the end of the wire so there's a flat spot, stick it in there, tighten up the grub screw, and this guy doesn't flex at all. So very cool, excellent feedback off this guy. On the bottom are where I keep, get him in there, all of the tools and you guys have seen these before these are the latest from andy mac so you got a set of them you got two basic two basic gauges or sizes you notice the one on the right is a little bit wider than the one on the left so we're probably going to be using this guy today all right enough talk let's go ahead and put this guy together clamp up that lock and see if we can get it to open all right here is the key same key, same lock. Let's lock it up. Works perfectly. Let's leave it locked this time. Hopefully we don't need that stinking key. All right. Um, I've got the tool selected. we got the right size, 50-50 choice. Slide him in there and grab a wire that's got that turn on it. Slide him down the groove in the back of the lock, or down the length of the lock, rather. And slide him as far in as we can get him because I know from having seen the key that... This guy has some really low cut levers, which can be a real bear to get underneath. And I think I'm all the way in the back there. All right, I think that'll do it. Let's just adjust this a little bit. I wanna try to keep this part in focus without my fingers in there and keep an eye on that as well, because if I hit a false gate or maybe even the real gate, we should get a false set, fingers crossed. All right, I'm gonna start out with moderate tension and see what we got here. All right, that was the very backmost lever. Uh, but he's still spring. Got a click, but it feels like he fell back down. So, all right, everything is springy. I'm going to apply even heavier tension now to try to force one of them to bind. Nothing. Nothing. All right, one of you guys got to bind. Oh, 
I demand a binding. Here we go. Come on. Okay, I'm putting a little more force on the pick now. Because they're all just, they pop up, they make noise, but they're not doing anything. All right, let's try to recock it. I might have done a bad thing on that last lever. Okay, let's start again. Again with a heavy, heavy tension. Again, that was the last one. Same kind of thing we got before. And that was the last one again. It keeps making noise, but not doing anything. Kind of like my brother-in-law. Okay, I will, oh yes, I will take it. Notice how that thing, I might have had too much tension kind of holding things up, I don't know. We definitely haven't opened, but that was kind of, kind of nasty. All right, the trouble wasn't with uh, false gates, I don't think. I don't believe this has any false gates. The trouble came with getting the pick underneath that backmost and frontmost lever. I think that's probably why Waddock chose this particular lock to be, to be a challenge. All right, let's crack it open and take a look. Let's look at the innards here. Whoa, I felt one of the springs. All right, so the first lever popped off, not unusual. All right, so we got a, they got the number of cut uh, stamped in it. So we have a nice brass anyway, not any of that junky metal, nice springs on them. Uh, we got a four cut, no false gates. Now I'm gonna have to keep these in order. <laughs> and then I'm gonna undo all of these springs at once so we don't have them jumping out of there. Next one also does not look like a false gate, and it is a three cut. Again, no false gate. Looks like a five cut. Yeah, I'm thinking I might have used too much tension on this guy because I don't see any false gates at all. Number six cut. And another one, another five cut. Again, no false gates at all. So too much tension probably made my job harder on this guy. Let's take a look at how it works. Um, again, we got the bolt, and if you look at this, you notice we could tension with the tooth, but what happens is, let me pull this little clip out of here. This little clip keeps tension uh, on that curtain, so let's just move him over here for a second. On the back of this curtain, see how it protrudes just a little bit? That, when it turns, is what tensions this bolt. It fits up into that groove. So when we turn this, let's lock it, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So when he's down there and he turns, this, get the key, Bill, get the key, that's the best way. And the key turns it, what will happen is the key is not actually turning uh, the bolt. The key is turning the curtain, and the curtain then engages with that bolt. The key is not doing it. That little flange on the back of there is what's tensioning it. And that's why we can get away with using these little tools that have hardly any tooth on it at all. It's not long like a normal lever lock. It only has to engage with this curtain, not with the actual bolt itself. So that's why we have specialized tools. Enough talk, Bill. All right, guys, appreciate your time. Stay safe. Stay legal. Wadak, see, thank you, sir, for the lock.